Okay, great, Alexander. So, Alexander will present about the protection of traditional medical knowledge yes. under intellectual property law. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. I will try to be short and to the point. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, here we are. So, my presentation here today refers to uh, traditional medical knowledge, as you can see by the title. But my... Oh, sorry. There you go. But um, before going into my subject, the reason why I have selected this topic, and I believe it is of great importance, is exactly the fact that it is, it is something that is not well known. Many companies nowadays, particularly pharmaceutical companies, are using traditional medical knowledge in all the, the latest innovations that they are bringing out into the market. So, I will try to not go into legal uh, notions, but I do want to explain that what is important in intellectual property protection is that the, the items, the, the goods that are protected are new. This is the reason why, as you may see, uh, what I've noted out here is that they need to be original creations of the mind. Intellectual property cannot apply to things or goods which are not new into the market and which do not refer to something that I have created through my own mind, through my own initiative. So, as you may see, I may protect an invention, I may protect a work, whether it's literally, whether it's artistic, I may protect my company, the symbols that I use in my company. But if I want to extend this protection and talk about things that exist before my interference with them, then I cannot extend protection to this. I cannot come and ask of the intellectual the Intellectual Protection Office to grant me legal basis on something that exists before me. For example, a species, a variety, or uh, an animal species. Also, I cannot refer to methods. So, as you may see, I have created this diagram which explains where I may extend this protection for my gain. Now, the first part is the part that I would deal with today. Copyright is not of interest to companies because it refers to something that is more of an artistic nature. So, when referring to a company, this company, a pharmaceutical in the given occasion, may choose to protect the patents behind a medicine. It may choose to protect the trademarks. Industrial design refers to the aesthetics of a creation. So it's not so important when referring to medicine. But geographical indications are of importance, particularly when we're referring to traditional knowledge, which we need to show where it came from. So, there are a number of conventions. I will go through them, but the, the main idea is that every country seeks legal protection within a regional basis. So every country cannot interfere with the legislation of another country. Um, it's only natural considering how every legislation is created based on the history of a nation, based on what this country wants to give out into the world. So if my country produces a good which is used in medical science, I cannot allow another country to come and tell me how I will dictate matters upon this. So far, there are a number of tools that may be used, but uh, as, uh, as of now, I have chosen to choose to present only the most prominent ones. We have the European Patent Convention. We have the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property. This, once again, refers to business models. Uh, the WTO, this is the World Trade Organization Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. This is actually a very important text. Thank you. This is actually a very important text because it, it uh, deals with the economics behind the trade 
of medical goods. And of course, we have a number of agreements, such as the Hague Agreement on International Deposit of Industrial Designs and the Lisbon Agreement on the Protection of Appellation of Origins and their registration. This is something that I will be coming back to. If we want to be more precise as to what is demanded of each case is that patents, as already mentioned, need to have an inventive step. It is important that I come and I propose something new that hasn't existed before me. Trademarks are the logos that are used for companies so that I may recognize a company by what I see. The industrial designs, as already mentioned, are not exactly um, up to the uh, do not exactly refer to this case because uh, they are more of a business module which do not affect the uh, origin of medicinal knowledge. And geographical indications which in the best case of scenarios is something desired because we need to provide feedback as to where the goods have been, uh, where the goods have come from. So going into UNESCO, the and the definition given to intangible cultural heritage, we see that oral tradition, performing arts, social practices, rituals, festive events, knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe, or the knowledge and skills to produce traditional crafts is the definition of what we call intangible cultural heritage. But since we are referring to medicine, we need to be more specific in this definition. So we want to include health practices, we want to include traditional health practices. According to the World Health Organization, it is the sum total of the knowledge, the skills and practices based on the theories, beliefs and experiences indigenous to different cultures, whether explicable or not, used in the maintenance of health, as well as in the prevention, diagnosis, improvement or treatment of physical and mental illness. Unfortunately, this is something that cannot necessarily extend to legal protection due to the fact that this traditional knowledge incorporates genetic resources and many a times incorporates elements that naturally do not fall under copyright protection, such as herbal, animal, and, min and mineral material. The matter at hand is not only problematic concerning the uh, exploitation, the economic exploitation of these goods, but it also refers to matters of moral grounds. So copyright protection is very much concerned about the medium which is used when applying for a patent, for example. So it does matter if what the indigenous people of an area are promoting and using in their everyday life is something that is used uh, orally or is something that comes from a written text many a time something of a very old origin. The economic dimension of the problem which is completely different to that of copyright and touches upon the, the TRIPS agreement is that if we allow for companies to use these goods beyond the will of the people who own it, the people who apply it in their everyday life, we may be giving grounds to misappropriation, which might go against the beliefs of these people. But then again, if we allow for copyright protection over goods which belong to the public domain, which do not belong to a particular person, but which can help the medical knowledge as we know it today, then we're giving grounds to monopoly and maybe this monopoly will stop knowledge from flowing out into other countries and other sciences. As I already mentioned, we have the moral dimension, which is intellect with the economic factor, which we must, must take into account. Now, I will go through the examples so I can give you an idea of the problems which occur. Uh, as I already mentioned, the patent and uh, more or less all copyright protection demands that there is an inventive step. I cannot apply copyright to something that is a plant, for example. This is the reason why the, the problem, a problem which had uh, arised, was that of the maca plant. As you can see, I've got it on the slide. Uh, when U.S. companies decided to, to gain copyright protection, patent protection, over this plant, there was a general outcry 
but unfortunately, it could not be resolved on a legal basis. Uh, the fact that the, Peru, the people of Peru uh, grew this plant for many years, knowing what it could do for our health, knowing that it had prospects, could not stop another company from stepping in uh, providing um, innovation, medicinal innovation through laboratory work and gaining, naturally, a copyright protection over this plant. So in this case, though there was not a solution, there isn't a solution up to this day, uh, we have two options. Either we protect the people of the Andes, we protect the Peruvian people in what they have gained, in what they need in order to develop the, their economy, or we allow for this knowledge to be disseminated so that laboratories may proceed, so that new medicines may come forward, and so that, it's, so that we may offer to humanity as a whole. I will go through this uh, very quickly. There is always the prospect of trade secrets, in which case the people of Peru or any other people who share in a, a secret may choose to keep this as a secret but still strive for copyright protection. There are many, there are many initiatives in this field. We have the option of geographical indication, in which case we are forced to provide for proof when we use materials originating from a particular country. This serves the purpose of uh, not taking advantage of a foreign trade that may be catastrophic for the economy of the nation at hand. I will not go into the examples. Uh, we also need to show respect to customary law. Customary law is not necessarily law, it's not legal. It is the practice which is used behind a traditional medical practice. So, in other words, not only must we gain the knowledge which, uh, this, uh, which is uh, used by these people, but we also must be aware of the context in which it's applied. One possible suggestion is the creation of a sui generis uh, system. Sui generis systems are those which are created strictly on the basis of a special kind for the protection of the particular case at hand. The most well-known um, body which deals with these problems is the World International Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, so far there have been many proposals as to how to refer to this prob problem, how to solve it. Uh, I would say that the most important is the alternative dispute resolution which allows for the parties which are at hand, which have the problem at hand to cooperate, to to talk and try to solve this problem, which is, of course, very complicated, uh, based on other grounds, not necessarily on legal grounds, because as already mentioned, it's not always applicable. As you can also see, there are many other bodies and tools which try to ser serve the same purpose. The World Health Organization, UNESCO, of course. Uh, UNESCO also has the Cultural Heritage Fund, uh, which serves to protect not only the intangible cultural heritage, but uh, provide for according education so that people are aware of such problems. We have the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Uh, I, I am going very quickly through these. I just want to reach a, a conclusion. Um, here I have some, some facts and figures, just uh, roughly to show you that there is a, a large percentage, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot, there are large sums of money which are spent exactly on the, uh, on the study of traditional medicine. And my final suggestions. Uh, and I believe they are the suggestions of everyone who is aware of this problem, is the, the creation of a universal registry, uh, allowing this knowledge to be collected into a uniform dat uh, database is what is necessary in order for this to be accessible, both by laboratories and the countries which wish to protect it. There are already some examples. It's the China Traditional Chinese Medicine Patents Database, which 
manu which aims at guarding the, these patents so they do not leave the country. It is only after explicit uh, permission that they may be disclosed. We have the India Traditional Knowledge Digital Database, the Korean Traditional Knowledge Portal, and Genesis, which though not referring strictly to uh, medicinal purposes, serves as a database for food and agriculture. So it, all the seeds, all the genetic material which is necessary is uh, guarded within the database. Um, one other alternative solution are the contractual agreements between the countries at hand. Uh, but then again, they also need to be monitored so that there is no misappropriation from the companies who wish to use the genetic data and, of course, creative commons. So, I believe I was as short as possible. <laughs> thank you very much, okay, Alexandra. That too. was really, really interesting. Thank you. Great, great contribution and very important one I, as well. I wish I could have said more. <laughs> I know, and it's really, really hard to cut people off, isn't it? Because we all come here with a passion and we only are given uh, panels. This is a message for you. Just a few minutes to actually contribute. So maybe in the future it's something to consider um, to give further opportunities, I think, to contributors for, for dialogue and debate, which is really, really important. <laughs> Uh, I myself, I'm really rubbish at timekeeping. You saw that upstairs. So, anybody? Yes, any questions, please? I can't hear you. Yes. I believe it does.
Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, it is truly the, the work of the lawyers to protect monopoly concerning copyright and patents. Um, Yes. But it cannot be it cannot be helped because this is the nature of copyright. This is exactly what it serves. Um, however, as uh, as it's understandable, this is a difficult subject because uh, the reason behind trying to exclude monopoly is uh, the fact that it not no longer concerns just one company. Sometimes it concerns the collective people. So even though I do agree with the option that um, having fr uh, greater freedom concerning trademarks but not so much on copyright could be an alternative solution, I still do not see how we could cope with the problem of uh, offering remuneration to the people of a country uh, whose main uh, gain, main profit of the entire country might be the production of a particular good, which is used, rightfully, by a medicinal company. So I do agree with you that copyright needs to be protected and definitely monopoly to a certain extent, uh, a great extent, perhaps, ought to be protected for the sake of having competition. Um, but it, it is a problem, it is a problem, and um, a Creative Commons, uh, and as I already mentioned, the sui generis system for each occasion would be good uh, because it would provide the basis, it would be, provide the initiative for something completely new and would allow the market to be much freer in, in, the, in the exchange of ideas, in the exchange of patents, but still, but still, um, I, I do believe that uh, we, we have an understanding. Uh, this is why the, uh, I am talking too much again, but this is why the idea of a database is, is so ideal. But it's still something that is a bit too idealistic. There are many countries which are not aware of their rights. There are many countries which are not aware of copyright protection at all. So it takes a lot of harmonization on uh, not only a European or an, a US level, it's, it's, it's a global problem, which is stopping us, is stopping the world from having access to better medication. Great, thank you very much, uh, Alexandra, for responding to that question. Is there any other question, the audience? No, okay, one very quick one for me. Very interesting how you started talking about Creative Commons and uh, licenses. And I was wondering how does this link to IP and uh, intellectual property, obviously. Um, you talked about protection, power, control, which I think links to intellectual property. I'm not a lawyer. I have, I'm quite clueless uh, about these things. But how does IP, Creative Commons licenses, and open access linked, especially in medicine and pharmacology and all that stuff that produce valuable research for the social good. Why can we not open up um, all these patterns, have open patterns and things, and actually help uh, people around the world instead of focusing on, on the commercialization of, uh, of research findings? And maybe, is this by... Um, in higher education and in other research institutions, there are actually cures for important diseases and things already available, but the big sharks um, keep the IP and things. And I don't know how to phrase it politely, but it's an opportunity <laughs> for, yes, for a more liberal, for a more open approach to help actually people well, who need uh it. Um, I guess the big sharks, as you mentioned, are the big sharks because they hold patents. And um, to a certain extent, this is understandable. Because uh, if a company, as I already mentioned, invests this amount of money for research, it could not possibly fall back on such costs. So it is a matter of trying to uh, circulate the system. We, we cannot have results, we cannot have uh, productivity if we do not support a, a viable market. So it, it's, it's not a matter of just allowing these patterns out into the world and um, 
allowing for people to have access to this, for other companies to have access to this. It's not uh, so much a matter of cooperation. Uh, what moves the market is competition. Um, so I would say that it would be very nice if we could uh, allow for such free use of information, but um, unfortunately I don't think it could possibly allow us to have better medicine in the future. Um, and this is, this is the, the, the main idea behind uh, the concept of traditional medical knowledge, that since this knowledge is out in the open, since it belongs to the public sphere, because it cannot be traced back to the person who invented it. No one has invented it. It's the traditional knowledge. And since it's out, out in the open, uh, companies will strive to gain access to it and then work on that knowledge to produce better medicine. But in this way, we are being unfair towards the people who depend, whose uh, livelihood depends on the production of these goods. Okay, thank you very much, okay. uh, Alexandra. I, do you want to say something? This is food for thought, I think, for me personally, but maybe for all of us. So a big round of applause to all our uh, three presenters. Thank you very much. And I think it's now time.